every great team has been called lucky. Oh, well, they get all the breaks. No, it's you only remember those breaks because they cash in on them. Where good teams or average teams don't. You don't remember the good fortune that a team doesn't capitalize on. Yes, they got the fumble. And you know what they did with it? They scored. And yeah, you know what? Atlanta dropped back to pass on second and 10 from the 23. You know what they did? They sacked the quarterback. They made a play. And Chris Long on the next play earned the holding call with a great pass rush that forced the left tackle, Matthews, to hold. So you have to be great in order to capitalize on those things. So, look, I get both sides. I think it's totally fine if you believe, look, Atlanta gagged. But, man, when you look at the stats, when you look at the things that needed to happen, I'll give you the one piece of luck that was in this game. It was Edelman's catch, just like the Giants were lucky with David Tyree. I mean, that Edelman catch was incredible and unforeseen and unforgettable in every adjective you can generate. But they took the game. You know, you got to put yourself and run the first 80 plays to tire a defense out to where the last 13 plays, Atlanta was a zombie apocalypse. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. So that that is part of a game plan that sometimes it takes time to see it actually unfold. For instance, why do why do teams run early in games when they're not, you know, getting yards? They're getting two or three yards because they want it to be more effective later in the game. And I think it's New England was setting themselves up to be the stronger team. Maybe that's the team that won, but be the stronger team at the end of the game. It doesn't mean that Atlanta choked. It just means that, you know, uh, New England did what, what they do. They they controlled the clock. They kept the ball. And it has an accumulative effect on teams. Uh, that's why they play 60 minutes of football, because to see if you can be strong at the beginning and also strong at the beginning, at the end, which Atlanta could not accomplish. No doubt at all. New England was great. Didn't quit with that. Atlanta choked. That's from Mike. Atlanta choked. They looked like the Lions in the second half. Brady was great late, but the Falcons' moronic play calling late cost them the game. But again, they call a pass play. New England made a play and sacked the quarterback. New England made a play and forced a holding call. I think there's another side to that. Now, I agree. If you just run the ball there, you take away the opportunity to make a great play. And I can't argue with you, Rivard. I can't. Uh, what is the emotional state of Georgia Jimmy Powers today? I, look, low. Not in a good place. Not talkative. I'm keeping away. I, I won't bring this game up unless it's brought up to me. He's in his office as we speak. Very quiet. Very sullen. And I think that's a justifiable response. Do you know why also? Because he probably understands his team is not even going to make the playoffs next year. This is going to have a devastating effect that, that can carry over for a while. I'm with you, Mike. Pats took the game. Falcons were tired, and the Pats took advantage of it. Uh, and again, number of people writing in, shouldn't have passed the ball at the end. I, I don't disagree. But what's the other side of it? The other side is when you are conservative and it doesn't work, people complain about that. Yes. I agree they should have run the ball. All they needed was the chip shot field goal. Yes, in the NFL, under 40 yards is a chip shot. Matt Bryant, Sully, pull it. Isn't he 36 of 38 this year? It sounds about right. He's been tremendous. I'll get the exact number. but Let's go over to Vern, 97-1. Hello, Vern. Christmas, everybody. It's a beautiful day. Merry Christmas. Man. Uh, this has to be the most satisfying Super Bowl um, thus far, um, mainly because I have to apologize to Pat Nation, and I know Pat Nation is strong in, in Michigan, because I thought it was over the second half. And, and I don't know why I underestimated uh, Tom and Bill, but I think they played the worst half I've seen him play in a long time and then do the smartest adjustments in the second half. They pulled Martellus Bennett and asked him to be a blocker when he was easily, you know, catching passes over the middle. And this is type of the stuff that, you know, I witnessed so much is the adjustments coupled with Atlanta, some of the, the worst play calling I've ever seen. And I and I like I was telling my friends, um, as I told my friends from Atlanta to rise down instead of rise up, that you can blame this loss on your coaching staff. I thought the Patri the Falcons had the Patriots number, 
and it was like they complete they went to the to the locker room at the second half and decided to do everything opposite of what they were doing in the first half. And when you have a killer and the greatest of all time, and I wouldn't say greatest athlete of all time, that's kind of debatable. I think it's between him and Serena. But when you have the greatest of all time, which there is no more argument for, you put yourself in a bad position where you fall away from your whole plan in the second half. I just I was amazed at what I saw from the Falcons after halftime. I couldn't believe it. Well, Vern, if you go back, and I, I think it's it's a play call that people will forget, but everyone's talking about second and ten from the twenty three, four minutes to go in the third quarter. Go the drive before. Third and one. Right. Why on third and one are you going empty set and throwing the ball? You are averaging 6.8 yards a carry. You've got to line up and run the ball there. And there is somebody on that sideline who was on, what, the Seattle side. He saw the Super Bowl disappear from him. You saw the narrative before. Why would you do that again? If you run a swing pass, the Devontae, which we could not stop all night, it was ball game. You went away from that. And you just totally forgot about it. Two swing pass or one swing pass to third and one, or hey, just run it up the middle. That's ball game. And Mike, what do you always talk about? About coaches always trying to be the most brilliant or the smartest guy on the field, and it backfired. Just just stick with what works. Instead, now we have our fifth ring, one for the thumb. I can't wait to get my shirt. If my wife will let me drive to Boston. I will be there for the parade tomorrow, oh. and I'm thinking about oh, it. My goodness, seriously! Oh. But isn't that what Atlanta tried to do? It tried to do what it does the entire game. For instance, there's a report they only ran the ball five times after going up 28 to three. Now, if you go into shell mode and start running the ball all the time, you know New England could take over there uh, because you're not going to get as many first downs. You're running clock and everything. So Atlanta, you know, Atlanta had to figure out a way to play 60 minutes of Atlanta football, but they also needed to run run the ball a little bit more effectively or run it a little bit more to try to get out of this game. Let's go over to Joe, 97.1. What's up, Joseph? Hey, fellas. First What's up, Joey? Long-time listener. Welcome. Harry, it's great to hear you. I've um, been listening for a long time, and I'm glad to hear you back. Thank you there, Joe. Bottom line, we can talk about if they ran the ball, if – you know, someone took more time off the clock doing this or that. All we know is what happened in the game. And bottom line is the Patriots executed better than the Falcons did. That's why the Patriots won the game. That, that, that is a huge part of it, Joe. There's no question about it. But I have to believe on that sideline, the Falcons were in a different place. They're thinking, we got, we're going to win this. We got this one. You know, they see the owner on the sideline. Uh, You're right. You know, You're they're right. up 25. Yeah. You know, it, mentally, they had to be somewhere else. But still, the, the Patriots had to do what they did. I mean, I don't want to go into a deep detail, but at halftime, I'm a, I was rooting, I'm a Michigan man. Sorry, Mike. But I was rooting for the Patriots. And 28 to 3, I was worried. And getting. Two eight-point touchdowns, going to overtime, winning the flip. I, but that's what greatness is. That, that That's I, my whole point, is they took the game. I mean, I that, that's my I, I think it's okay to present both sides, which I've tried to do. But, Joe, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I think the national narrative of Atlanta, you know, just flat out choking this puppy away, it takes away from the greatness of what the Patriots did. I agree. They ran – a direct snap at the goal line. Yes. Like the balls of that call. I've got my quarterback jumping around like the ball's over his head. Yeah. They, they yeah. just make the perfect play calls at the and right don't moments. don't forget about that second two-point conversion because there was no – Atlanta was saying there's a flag on the play. It, it was offside. That was for sure. Yeah. But when I watched it in real time, I thought, oh, they're getting, they're getting flagged on defensive – or offensive. Offensive P.I. Yeah. yeah. But you watch it. Brady clockworked it. Right. And and you know what? It's it's amazing too. I mean, look at overtime and, and it's small stuff. They went out and with Tom Brady ran a read option with I believe Chris Hogan coming in motion. Yeah. yeah. And it's a look they hadn't shown all game long. They got Atlanta for, you know, whatever it was, seven, eight yards. 
Just Joe, they made play after play after play, and to me, they deserve credit for it. I hope I hope Michigan State, for your sake, hires the next Bill Belichick. <sighs> <laughs> Do you really mean that, Joe? I don't believe oh, that. Eh, no, I'm a Michigan fan, but, you know, I hate calling in to say I agree with Mike, but at this point, yeah, let Michigan State get some dap, too. Well, there we go. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Thank you for that uh, wow. backhand that was nice. compliment. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Yes, Ellie, you look primed. No, I just wanted to say, and it's kind of like what you just alluded to, there really is something to be said about second-half adjustments. And, of course, everyone wants to point to the fact that ESPN projections had a 99.7% chance that Atlanta would win the game with six minutes left in the third quarter. But what New England was able to do and come out in the second half after that deficit and to just overcome it, it's incredible. Nothing short of remarkable. It is remarkable, but here's the thing that the Falcons were fighting. They're fighting, we're going to win this game. In the last quarter, they're thinking New England has to score four times on us in the last quarter, and it's not going to happen. And by that, I mean two touchdowns and two extra points. Mentally, you're thinking that's never going to happen, but then obviously it did, and once it did, that you know that ball was was gone. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We'll get more to phone calls in the mix, and certainly the Brady angle of all this. Has he cemented himself above Michael Jordan, or as Vern said, Serena Williams? Is Tom Brady the single greatest athlete in the history of athletes?